Today we're going to be doing modelling influenza epidemics using SRR models. My name is Luke Penn and my fellow co colleagues' names are Jordan Membry and Ricky Tatt. The history of influenza. 1918 influenza pandemic was a notorious breakout case that is well documented as the most devastating epidemic with over 50 million deaths and multiple outbreaks in many geographic areas around the world. This is a real world problem that has significant repercussions to populations around the world. So, what is influenza? Influenza is a contagious disease of the respiratory tract caused by influenza viruses. This is taken from what is influenza 2015. It spreads rapidly through the human populations in brief bursts called epidemics. Each year around the globe, influenza causes serious infection and even death. I'll now hand over to Jordan Membry to talk about mathematical models of influenza. Hi, my name is Jordan Membry and I'll be talking to you about the mathematical models of influenza. Below here are the objectives used to help understand the spatial, temporal transmission dynamics of influenza. The mathematical model which could be applied to the influenza epidemic was developed in the earlier 20th century by W. O. Kermack and A. G. McKendrick. This model is known as the Susceptible Infectious Recovered, also known as the SIR model. As you can see below here, the SIR model is an epidemiological model that computes the theoretical number of people infected with a contagious illness in a closed population over time. The model includes the susceptible, the ones who can catch the disease, the infected, those who have this disease, and the recovered, those rem the removed, those who have had the disease and are now recovered, immune or isolated of the population. If infected, patients either move on by entering the recovery stage, or unfortunately, they leave the stage through death. This model here, derived from the SIR model um, above, assumes that the population is all at equal risk to meet another. The rate of infection is R is greater than zero, and the removal rate of the infected is A is greater than zero, only analysing the positives for solutions in this model. The SIR model is a basic um, model, however, general assumptions and observations can be made adequately from this. I will now hand you over to Ricky. Hey, um, today I'll be talking about the equation and continuing on from Jordan. So what we have here is the equation that's derived based on n being the value of population. This equation is also the initial conditions to the problem. Based on the equation 10.2 in the second reference, this equation determines whether the disease will develop in time and find when it will decline. The t-value has to be greater than zero no matter what case it is because there is no negative time. So as you can see here, this is the R value that's been given to us. The R value is the infection reproduction, infection reproduction rate of vital considerations for dealing with influenza epidemics. Decreasing the susceptible is one way to aid in reducing the reproduction rate. Vaccination is a common method in er eradicating diseases and epidemics. A mass vaccination creates herd immunity across the communities which is also the most effective design of control amongst the disease as it provides protection to individuals and groups to keep the reproduction rate below epidemic levels. The levels of RO fades and creates possibilities for non-vaccinations among people. Due to this, the reproduction rates can rise quite rapidly and beyond the critical value that can start an epidemic. So this one now is what will the S value is. What the S value is, the S value is susceptible which will be always be greater than zero because everyone will be, is assumed to be susceptible. And because the n value is the total size of the population, it will also go with um, regards to s. Because the s value is infinite, because there's an infinite amount of susceptible people, the r value will also be infinite because the r value corresponds with the s value. So now, on to Luke to continue on with the mathematical solutions. So as Ricky said, I'm going to be talking about mathematical solutions to be used to solve the original real-world problem. The use of these models during the inter-pandemic period outlined valuable data on the epidemiological characteristics of past pandemic influenza viruses. Historical data understandings of past pandemics assist mathematical modelers to create a simulation model to visualise that a pandemic virus would ultimately spread to all countries in time due to the international air travel network. These simulations provide significant systematic platforms to ascertain the effectiveness of various pandemic containment and mitigating strategic solutions that would otherwise be difficult or impossible to evaluate. Modelling studies have shown effective and well-documented guidelines 
on very plausible outcomes of antiviral inter intervention vaccination, which will remain constructive strategies of national influenza pandemic plans. So, in conclusion, mathematical modeling plays an important systematic framework analysis and pandemic response, whereby revealing the weakness of an existing pandemic surveillance and then guiding how these systems can be further embellished and strengthened in preparation of future epidemics of influenza.